Hello everyone and welcome to One Civil Law. For those of you who might have been paying attention, there was a man who set himself on fire outside of the courthouse in which Donald Trump is being tried in New York for money, for hush money related crimes, or more specifically, paperwork violations there too. A man just set himself on fire earlier today. The man was named, let me get, make sure I get this right, the man was named Maxwell Azarello. And I believe he might still be alive, actually, in a burn unit, which is very sad for him, I'm sure. But he, before he set himself on fire, he spread a, he had a pamphlet. He had copies of a pamphlet he was spreading around. And I'm now going to read the entirety of the pamphlet verbatim in dramatic reading form, because that sounds like a funny thing to do. Here, the, the title of the pamphlet is... The True History of the World, Haunted Carnival Edition. It does not have a listed author. Let us proceed. The True History of the World, Haunted Carnival Edition. We'll know our disinformation campaign is complete when everything the American people believes is false. CIA Director Bill Casey, 1981. An Occupy Returns Booklet. Our only goal, abolish our criminal government and replace it with one that serves all. Our story starts with fascism, which is the government of the con artists and the thieves. Don't take my word for it. Here are Hitler's own words. The size of the lie is a definite factor in causing it to be believed because the vast masses of a nation are more easily deceived than they are consciously and intentionally bad. They would never credit each other with possibilities of such great imprudence as the complete reversal of facts. Adolf Hitler, 1923. Is a totalitarian lie, and fascist leaders knew it. They used propaganda to shout lies so loudly over and over again that the masses believed them. They are your enemy which is why you must give us all the power, the fascist lies. Look at how rotten and violent your neighbors have become. We need a strong dictator to make things right, says the power-hungry fascist. The enemy of the fascist state isn't just the most oppressive groups, it's the entire public. They are sold the lies that democracy must be overruled, that they must embrace the fascist violence and total control for their own good. The leaders steal the public's lives and livelihoods, their meanings and purpose, as they shout lies in all directions. A fascist state, then, is a totalitarian cult. They flip morality on its head, control the flow of information, and tell the public they have no choice but to submit to their charismatic leaders who are bleeding them dry. There were many con artists and thieves who quite liked fascism because it made them ungodly rich. There were the industrialists who proffered off the war machines, the media empires who used propaganda for theft, and the quote-unquote suggests the Central Intelligence Agency. World War II when the Holocaust showed them the world just how terrific fascism was, slaughtering its own people in death camps and on battlefields. The rotten con of fascism was exposed, and the public wouldn't so easily be duped again. Hitler was defeated, but the vast networks of fascist war profiteers remained, and they yearned for total control. They knew the power of propaganda, so they hatched an evil plan. They wouldn't rush, and they wouldn't call it fascism. Instead, they would slowly, steadily poison culture, as they divided the masses against each other and broke their collective spirit, until the day they would shatter it all completely and throw the people to the wolves. And they would do it all in the name of freedom. After the war, America flourished. The American dream was in full swing, as millions joined the middle class. And it seemed like a good deal for many. Work hard and you'll have a house and a car. Prosperity, security, and comfort. But with the message, but with it came a message of existential fear, a favorite tool of the fascists. In 1947, the public was introduced to the Doomsday Clock. There is a day, the people were told, that prosperity could evaporate, that we will be annihilated by a nuclear war and societal collapse. Tick-tock, 
went the doomsday clock. In the 1960s, the U.S. government faced its biggest threat in modern history as dissent grew among the public. The atrocities of the Vietnam War were on full display, and millions questioned why we were sending our young men to kill and die in jungles on the other side of the world. The civil rights movement clamored for racial change, as blacks and other minorities were excluded from the promise of the American dream. The hippie movement brought a rejection of modern American thought, as leaders and musicians pre preached pacifism, activism, and revolution. The government assassinated leaders, but they knew it wouldn't be enough. They couldn't just kill people, they needed to kill ideas. To stop the threat of a united public, they turned to the fascist's greatest weapon, propaganda. As they ravaged the countercultural movements with drugs, they formed and popularized brand, bands of their own to quell dissent. They, there was the Grateful Dead. As Jerry Garcia said, we're not thinking about any kinds of struggles. We're not thinking about revolution or war and there, or any of that. Stop with all that radical thought and enjoy the ride, they insisted. There was the Doors. Jimmy Morrison's father was an admiral in the Gulf of Tonkin incident that kicked off the Vietnam War, and now his son preached alienation and hopelessness with songs like People Are Strange and The End. There were the Beatles, who scoffed at revolution, told us to fear of the tax man and that happiness is a warm gun. As the people cheered, they had no idea that the purpose of all this was not to entertain, but to slowly steer them away from hope and activism and towards something much more sinister. Meanwhile, the U.S. government engaged in a brutal act of psychological terror, the Manson family murders. The message to the public was loud and clear. Lock your doors. The peace and love era is over. Hippies are deranged, murderous psychopaths. But the media never told the public that the Manson case was crawling with CIA operatives and cover-ups, that it was all the government's doing. Hollywood shared the same message in the film Easy Rider. The hopeless, rotten hippies had become morally bankrupt, the film declared. The end of the counterculture was over. Unfortunately for the public, we believe them. The movements died because the government said they did, and the long era of hopelessness began. When it comes to the media designed not just to entertain, but to poison our culture and lead us astray, it doesn't mean that every writer, producer, and stagehand was in on it, so it's tough to ascribe individual blame. Unless, like Stanley Kubrick, they admit it. In 1964, the acclaimed director made Dr. Strangelove, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb, a riotous comedy about nuclear annihilation in the Cold War. Why did Kubrick make it? He told us right there. So he'd learn to stop worrying and love the bomb. In 1971, Kubrick made A Clockwork Orange, a film of gruesome ultraviolence filled with laughs and cheer. If you're flooded with ultraviolet media, you'll become a better person, the film lied as we stared at the screen. As the years went on, the fascist conditioning only grew. Gone were the calls for revolution. Now the public was gleefully singing along to the highway to hell. Punk and death metal preached doom, apathy, and hopeless nihilism. Gangsta rap celebrated violence, hedonism, and excess. MTV sold a younger generation apathy, irony, and image. From cartoons to video games, action movies to horror, the public was dazzled with violence in all directions. Mobsters and anti-heroes flooded the screen. And with it all, a surge in apocalyptic fiction. Zombies and dystopian hell worlds had become so prevalent that millions fantasized about an apocalypse to free themselves from the toll and drudgery of being a cog in the capitalist machine. Like frogs in water coming to a boil, the public didn't notice the raw truth behind the illusion of freedom. Do you see what's behind the curtain yet? Things escalated wildly in 1988 when former CIA director George H.W. Bush became the president. Now the secret fascists had their case to the kingdom, and we haven't had a fair presidential election since. In the decades since, 
the angry partisanship between Democrats and Republicans was all a fascist rod to divide the public against itself while they all ramped up militarism, privatized industry, and gutted social safety nets. Bush, Clinton, Obama, Trump, Biden. These are characters playing pretend, just like professional wrestlers. Meanwhile, poisoned fascist meetings flooded all the media. Daytime talk shows tell us how rotten and morally decayed we've become. Local news and shows like Cops tell us criminals are lurking around every corner. Reality TV sells us hedonism, excess, and interpersonal strife. Shows like Ancient Aliens misguide us with nonsensical conspiracies, intentionally dumbing down the public so we don't realize the financial criminals are steering the ship. And then we got the internet with its revolutionary promise of free and open communication. Like the American dream before it, it seemed like a good deal. But our secret fascists held all the power, and this became the greatest tool to help achieve the CIA's disinformation campaign. They used the internet to create a post-truth America. Through a steady monopolization of social media, they segmented the public into partisan bubbles. They addicted us to binge watching and doom scrolling while they used influencers, algorithms, and troll farms to make sure we saw the same messages over and over again. We are hopeless. We are angry. We are divided. We are rotten. And we are doomed. They used memes to reduce our discourse so we'd have to repeat what had been given to us. All we could do with this unprecedented new technology was to mock the other tribes, embrace apathy, parrot nonsensical conspiracy theories, and have a carthat and have a car have a carthatic laugh at how awful the circumstances had become. This is fine, we said, as the world burned around us. There is one theft tool that our fascist elites have embraced more than any other the Ponzi scheme. In a Ponzi scheme, con artists use smoke and mirrors to pretend, pretend that fake investment is a real one. It's been a favorite out of the Ivy League schools and Silicon Valley. This network of criminals built so many Ponzi schemes, it threw us into recessions. The dot-com bubble, all by design. They promised invest investors these new websites would take off, but they just pocketed the money instead. The Great Recession All Planned The product of Ponzi factories our billionaires have built, fueled by things like offshore drilling, that victims will never see, and fake fantastical scheme breakthroughs, science breakthroughs, like Jeffrey Epstein's Program for Evolutionary Dynamics at Harvard and Elizabeth Holmes Theranos' at Stanford. And then they built a Ponzi scheme or as a magnitude larger than any before. It's called cryptocurrency, and it's our first planetary, decentralized, multi-trillion dollar Ponzi scheme. It was created largely out of Stanford, Harvard, and Silicon Valley, and has the full backing of the U.S. government and many of its allies. The promise of a secure blockchain is a fiction. They built technology that allows them to secretly funnel stolen cash out of the crypto exchanges, through their own companies, and into their own pockets. More than half of the Fortune 100 companies got in on the theft. When they offered NFTs or were using the blockchain for logistics or anything else, it was a ruse every time. In truth, those companies were funneling billions in stolen cash out of the crypto exchanges. When the Ponzi scheme goes insolvent, as all Ponzi schemes must, it will take many of our largest companies with it. It will shatter the world economy on a scale no one has ever seen. Cryptocurrency is, quite literally, an economic doomsday device built by many of our richest and most powerful people. And now, our doomsday clock to our doomsday device. From highway to, from highway to hell to canned water called liquid death, we revel, we reveal the rotten truth of it all. We are in a totalitarian doomsday cult, and our doomsday clock is about to strike midnight. After spinning in circles and dazzling us with lies for so long, our government is about to hit us, hit us with apocalyptic fascist coup nearly a century in the making. This is our great reset, 
our great world order. Yank the rug out from under the American dream. Pull the plug on the internet and throw us all into a violent state of emergency for the rest of our lives so history's worst criminals can have total control indefinitely. But when the public learns that they are the victims of the worst con in all of human history, we get to defeat fascism forever. When our entire lie is a life, the truth is our fascist leader's kryptonite. A small movement armed with these truth-colored glasses will become a big one. So laugh defiantly and spread the news. The emperor has no clothes. If you share this story, you will bend history. And if you do it quickly, we can stave off the apocalypse. For footnotes, much more information, and a sea of proof, visit the Ponzi Papers dot substack dot com the biggest lie they told us is that we are powerless thus ends the dramatic reading well i'm glad i could share that with you all so that apparently is why the man set himself on fire outside of the trump trial i guess so that was super duper exciting well, my friends, that will bring us to the end of this dramatic reading of the true history of the world, the Haunted Carnival edition. Unclear what other editions there might be out there for me. I don't have the other editions. I just have the Haunted Carnival edition. I have to say I'm, I'm somewhat, un, uh, somewhat disappointed there wasn't more carnival involved. But, you know, I'll take what I can get. Thank you for turning into this episode of Uncivil Law. I've been Uncivil Law until later, my friends. I hope all's well. Cheers, my friends, for now, and goodbye.